So yesterday, I don't know if you seen I made um, fish tacos, and in that I alluded to the fact that we raised chickens. That was me and my first husband. Anyway, we had chickens for a good while, and we kept them there in the back. Of the, we lived in a trailer, and we kept them there in the back, right in front of the horse pasture, which was behind that. Now, the thing about my town is it's um progressive, but it's still country. So there's like one main road that goes through the boulevard. <laughs> the boulevard. Anyway, it goes through. You can turn, I, I promise you, you can make one turn and not hardly go a block and you're in the country. Anywhere up and down through there as you head on up toward the next little town. But there's like one, two, three, four little towns. We're separate towns, but we're like just slammed all together. So the two down here kind of go together. And then right above us, those two. And there's just, you know, you just cross the road and there you are. But anyway... So we were, we were lived in the country because we could do the country things. So anyway, we had the chickens. <laughs> because we lived at the front of the horse pasture and there was the, uh, goats in the pasture beside us. <laughs> so <laughs> we would get rats up in the hen house. They didn't come in the house. I got lucky every now and then we'd get a mouse just because you just do. But, um, We'd get rats. I mean, they was rats around that hen house because they was in there eating the, trying to get the eggs, trying to eat the dead chickens, eating the feed. Lord, we fed as much rats as we did chickens, I believe. But, um, <laughs> they would be so bad sometimes. <laughs> now they would have tunnels <laughs> all under. We had a garden out there beside the hen house and <laughs> they would be tunnels like mole tunnels. All under the yard, up under the hen house, you could walk and just kind of squish in it. Well, they got bad, <laughs> really bad, <laughs> that one time. <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to tell y'all this. It was fun, though. I ain't going to lie. We'd go out there. <laughs> I'd get the hose pipe and plug it up in one in one hole. <laughs> and when it flooded... <laughs> They'd come scurrying out the, whichever one of my husband would be over there, <laughs> picking them off with a BB gun. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. That was good times. <laughs> That's the kind of fun you have out in the country. If you ain't never shot rats coming out a water hole, <laughs> you ain't lived, okay? <laughs> oh, but one year we decided we wanted to raise hogs. So we raised hogs one year and we, Made our own liver mush. If you ain't never had liver mush, it is a southern staple. Even though they, some southern people don't eat it, but I was raised on it. And so David won't eat it. Well, he'll eat it if I like make it, if he's hungry, but he don't like love it. As a matter of fact, I'm having it this week for breakfast. But, um, it's like the meat in the pig's head, obviously the pig's liver, spices and cornmeal. And you just, cook it up put it in a loaf it congeals it's not jellied it's just um well it's just a loaf of what i just told you and then you slice it and fry it so we did that one year listen we was out in that yard we had a cooktop out there in the yard i mean a big old pot you boil down that pig head and you pick all that meat off and you you just do it it was it was good i'm gonna tell you now me and mama she knowed everybody in the country because it was a whole lot of country still around here when she grew up. Matter of fact, she grew up in the house, two houses, three houses down across the street was my great aunt. And then right down that little dirt road was my other great aunt. So this was family um, land. And where I'm living is my mama. We bought this house from my mama. Um, anyway, she knowed everybody. I mean, everybody in town. So we would go down here when she was still alive because I took care of her. Now, she still got up and did for herself, but I tended to her the last few years of her life. We went everywhere to go. We was like best friends. And she died right before I moved in this house, which this road I live on, I live at this corner. You just go right down the road. She lived right where the house did end. That was her house right there. 
So if she knew that I moved right down here from her, she would have been ecstatic because she would drive by going to her sister's house right across the road, to the horn wherever she had this big old black LTD. Oh my lord, that was the biggest car. If y'all ever seen them back in, in the seventies, phew. Anyway, oh, I'm getting off on everything this morning. Um, so we was go over to the country to these people she knew that made their own liver mush. And we would go in and they just made it in just tin foil pans. And just, we would just get a, a big old pan of it. I, I'm telling you, like the nine by 13 pans, we'd get a pan or two of that and take it on up to the house. And boy, that was good too. But we knew everybody. We'd go out and she knew people. We'd pick out their garden and their fig trees and their apple trees and corn and beans and peas. And anything you can imagine. She knew people. And we went to pick it. That that was when she had to stop doing her garden. Because she got to where she couldn't tend it. Anyway, that, that was part of with Mama. And then um we would also eat me and, you know, that one. The first one. <laughs> He was a hunter and a fisher, a fisherman. Now, he was a, oh my Lord. If he was breathing, he was fishing. That was a lot of our problem because he wouldn't stay his ass home. So that, we don't even go there, but <laughs> I like to fish too. And I ain't gonna lie. I like to fish too, but you know, I had a house to keep up and a, a child and there was things you needed to do other than set out on the lake from sun up to sundown. Anyway, uh, we eat fish. All the time. Now, see, we didn't have much. He worked, and I stayed home with RJ. We chose that lifestyle because I wanted to stay home with RJ, and I did. And we made it work. That That's when I learned all my darn pioneer ways. Because if I could figure out how to do it and save us money, then, you know, I did. So that's how we lived. Um, So he, he hunted and fished, and he'd bring home deer. You know, I'd have coolers and buckets of deer in the kitchen, you know, working it up, getting it ready for the freezer. We'd take it down and get it ground up. They would save us um, beef fat down at the butcher. And back when we still had a butcher at this little store in town, and then we'd take it and have them grind that up for us. And don't, if you have deers, you already know, you don't grind it up by itself because it is dry as a bone. You won't be able to choke it down. So get you some beef fat and grind that up with it but um that's when i come up with like our favorite i still do it today but i do it with pork tenderloin it's one of david's favorite meals i had come up with it back then something to do with the tenderloin in the deer that would be good so you know what we'll make them one day i think y'all like that let me put that on my mental list okay then fish we would have fish fries. Oh my gosh. So that fish I made yesterday, that's just for eating, eating healthy. That ain't the kind of fish I like. And that is not the kind of fish I made. I mean, we had, cause we had friends back then. Me and David, we just don't have friends. We are hermits. <laughs> we don't, we don't have friends. And that sounds terrible. Y'all my friends. <laughs> so like I told you before, y'all stuck. <laughs> you fast forward if you don't want to hear all this mess. But, um, we would have fish fries for, family and friends and just have the music out there and people walking around just the kids i mean a blast and i mean i would put it on i fried i don't know how much fish i would fry I'd make my homemade hush puppies the french fries the giant i made slaw in the gallon um jug the kind red slaw like you can keep in the refrigerator forever i mean we put it on desserts those that now those was fun times having them big old um dinners like that out in the yard um i couldn't do it today so yeah that 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 was just telling you about the chickens got me into all that <laughs> but, <clears throat> excuse me and then i remember one time too he went quail hunting and we we had a family reunion to go to down in the country. <laughs> I took a big old thing of fried quail. And you better know they eat every last one of them. Because that stuff was good. He brought in squirrels. We had fried squirrels. That stuff's good too. And I ain't going to eat it today because I done got out of the habit of eating that kind of meat. So I probably would eat it today just because I would be like, it's been so long. I don't know. I may because it is really good. Fried squirrel is really good. Um, So yeah, that that was just 
from me and RJ's daddy when RJ was little. But, um, now, yeah, <laughs> I got off yesterday. David, let me preface this by saying, this is the hardest working man I have ever known in my life. He was working two jobs when I met him. He was, we worked at a trucking company and, and met there. And he was starting up his own trucking company because growing up, his daddy had a dump truck um, business. So he's been around trucks his whole entire life. I tell him all the time, he don't have blood. He's got diesel in his veins because that man loves a truck. Side note, his company has gone from truck to automatic trucks and it's about to drive him insane. He just feels like he's driving a, a regular old pickup truck. He can't stand it because he likes the gear changing and the clutching and all that stuff and you know, clutching. That is the proper term for it. But, he misses that kind of thing, and, and all the drivers over there and complaining, complaining. They, they just told them they weren't going to buy any more, but that don't help with the ones they got. I said they need to sell them off and get the boys back the trucks they like. He said it beats him to death, you know, going down the road. He He's like a rock in a bucket. But anyway, he is one of the hardest working men I've ever known. His daddy raised him, if you want something, you work for it. You raise your family, you work hard and that's what you do that he, his daddy raised him that is the most important thing in life is to work and um, that's how it so is so he will do anything i ask him bless his heart and especially since my health is, health has gone down he he will do anything i ask him and it don't matter that he just worked 12 hours on the road he, he'll come in in the morning case in point yesterday morning the day before because y'all know i've had sebastian Lord, y'all, I have been so tired because, and my legs have been suffering because when he's here, I can't elevate them. So they swell. My knee was, it was probably twice the size. I couldn't even bend it. It was so just huge and, oh, it was miserable. My house was a wreck because, you know, his stuff's laying around. I have stuff on my, I have an island. It's like a kind of a L shaped island. It's pretty good size. And, um, so part of that, I have a couple kitchen appliances and uh, my little candy jar. I got some fresh flowers, you know, my fruit bowl. So I have some things like on this side, but this side stays empty. I don't like anything on this side, but I got Sebastian's little food and his paper bowls and plates. Then David will set his lunchbox on there, which I grab it and stick it up on top of the freezer. Anyway, stuff sitting there, the table, because Sebastian has cups, and it's just, everything was just, I felt like I was just getting crowded in. Now, I don't live in no fancy house, and it ain't no show place. It's not going up in no better homes and gardens, because we live in our house. But my things are where they supposed to be. Everything has a place, and that's where I like it to be. Even if it's not a pretty place, it's a place. So I was just feeling crowded in. I couldn't do anything. Tater chips in the floor where the little child sits <laughs> watching his candle, my old candle I'm, I put down there for him. I prop it up on my little side table. He he lays down there. He eats his little snacks, watches his cartoons. Needed the vacuum. The whole nine, I needed my bathroom clean. So I was just crying. I just told him, I said, I, I'm just, I can't take it. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm about at my wit's end. And he's like, well... I'm going to come home. This was Friday. And Sebastian went home that night. But I was too tired. You know, I knew I, I was like, what am I going to do? Because I need to just get my feet up and rest. Not to mention the fact I get sensory overload. And the child, he don't never shut his mouth. <laughs> He's two and he don't hush. He is constantly moving, wiggling, running, talking, squealing, whatever he's doing. And it is... It's a sensory overload for me, which is kind of odd because I am so loud when I laugh and when I talk. Do you think I would overload myself? But I don't. <laughs> Y'all, what am I, a walking enigma? <laughs> so I was just, I was done. And I was just telling him. I wasn't asking him to do nothing. I, I honest to God, was not. And he's like, well, I, I'm coming home tomorrow and I'm, I'm going to clean this. I said, well. If you'll just clean my bathtub, I will figure out how to get the rest of it done. Well, he went down and dropped his mama's food off to her. And here he come. Now, I told you he done been out working all night, 12 hours. 
riding that <laughs> beaten truck. He goes 500 miles a night, I think. I can't remember what his run, how many exact miles his run is. I think it's at least a 500 mile run. And that's every night, five nights a week. Um, so anyway, he took his mama her food and come in the house and he said, he done something. He started heading back out the door. I said, where are you going? He goes, well, I got to get out here and clean these toolboxes, get them to dry so I can come in here and clean this house. So he went out there in the building. He's he got these big old um, craftsman toolboxes. And for whatever reason, he decided they needed cleaning. So he had all his tools took out, out there with the hose pipe, cleaning them. Now, let me tell you, this man, this is, we had 18 minutes. Y'all going gonna to be here a while because I got a lot to say. Um about well first of all let me say he he did own his own trunking company he, he got to it and then he quit the one where we met at so at one point he had three trucks at one time on the road they were working him to death so he was get some knee high uh, asshole deep that's what we say asshole deep in grease every weekend so anyway we eventually got out of that and uh, he found this company he's working for now. So which is a good thing because he's get, he's not old. He's 56. But he, he's getting to where he don't want to spend his whole entire life on the weekends working on big trucks. Because it took all his time. See, he was still working a full-time job at Freddy. And then coming home on the weekends and not sleeping. He, not sleeping, not sleeping, not sleeping. And still, he don't sleep maybe six hours a day. And I pick on him. I'm like, ooh, you really sleeping in. So anyway, he went out there to clean out his toolboxes. All these tools, that's, that's what I was fixing to tell you. He had all the tools that he had when he had his big trucks. And y'all don't know. Lord, he had a tool store. I'm telling you, this man had every tool coming and going. And you wouldn't believe how many specialty tools you have to get to work on a big truck. One part needs to come off. Well, guess what? You got to have a wrench this long to get it, you know, because you got to get some cleanness on it to get it off. We, when we got to this house, it was like maybe in 2008 when we started, because we bought it from Mama in 98, and this did little piddly things, you know, up until then. The, cause when you paint, we knew there was some water damage in the back at the bedroom, but we didn't know it had come up as far as it did. So it was like half of the house, the, um, Joyce were rotted out. Some of the seals around the outside were rotten out. So anyway, he gutted the whole house. There was nothing left but the shell around the brick and the wall studs. Even one of them, he had to jack the house up and replace a seal. I need to find a picture of that because y'all would not believe what that man come up with. If he can come up with it, he's not paying somebody to do it. Y'all better, better take that to the bank because you're not touching his money. <laughs> no, that's why he spent so much time working on his truck. You're not getting his money. If he can do it, he will figure it out. He's he's slow thinking about it because he contemplates every last thing. He is so analytical, y'all. He is not a fly by the seat of his pants kind of uh, man. And I'm just the opposite. So he studied and studied on that. And he got like cement blocks and boards and bottle jacks. And he jacked the house up off of that <laughs> bottom plate there. Replaced that seal it, it was crazy it was just craziest thing he probably saved thousands of dollars for the um people that come out and jack your house up he probably th saved us thousand dollars anyway we were renting an apartment during that time because there was nothing in we we could not live in the house you know i told you before at one point we lived in the built-in carport well that was after we got like the house back together starting to anyway um, so we weren't living here. Now he built him, he's got a 30 by 30 garage in the back of his house. It, it is big as a house. He wanted it. It's, t it's got two bays. It's got a whole side over there for all his tools, whatever, he, you know, and I ain't going to complain because my side is all mine and the kids stuff. They, they ain't never throwed nothing away. So they got it all stacked up over here at mom and dad's house. Well, he built that first. So we'd have somewhere to keep everything in the house for when he gutted it. So we went and rented an apartment. While we were at the apartment, then we eventually moved to a house. 
um, somebody come and robbed us blind. Everything we owned was in that building. Every tool he's ever owned was in that building. So I come over here one day to get something out. And I walked in and I looked. I'm like, my my first reaction was like, what has happened? Has he come over here and plundered in my stuff? Because, you know, I get mad when he touches my stuff because he is not careful. That's that's what we was going to talk about. All this to tell you, part of what I'm going to tell you. Um, And as I got the closer looking, I realized we was robbed. Turned out, and they caught, they caught that fool, and he spent time in jail. We got a, um, restitution order on him, but we'll never see that money. Never. <clears throat> he probably never had a job. Probably still don't. His job's robbing people, cause it ain't his first time. It, they caught him up the road in somebody else's house, hiding in the closet. What an idiot. Anyway, turned out, and this is with my neighbors, okay? This is with my, neighbors they brought their truck up here pulled up to the building used david's spotlights that he, he uses to work sat in there went through everything we owned loaded up their truck and took off they were in there for hours i mean hours over the night they even went through he has, um, his company, they get little, um, they don't do it much anymore, but they used to do a whole lot of Q, QWQs, quality without question. That's their motto, quality without question. So, um, workers can nominate you. You can just get them, you know, for whatever. So they give you little things, you know, with the logo on it. So he, I mean, he's got a, a big old thing. He, he don't use none of it. He don't throw none of it away to him. If it's something useful, he just, he just rather save us. He's got all his little, you know, awards, his little things. They even went through what I had all that stuff stored in. Some of it came in little boxes. They opened every single little box and stole a pocket knife that with his company name on it. So he's got everything they ever gave him except that pocket knife that them jerks stole from him. So they even got down to that. They even... My, um, Christmas wrapping paper, you know, those like red things, like with the handle. I think they thought it was a gun case. They cut it with a knife and then found out it was friggin' Christmas wrapping paper. So they just went through all our stuff. It, it felt, it was so violating. And I was so mad that they took his stuff that he worked so hard to get. He's never rebuilt up his, tool collection which he don't need all the stuff to work on the big trucks but that was his stuff you know it don't matter what it was anyway i'm about to get emotional about that because it makes me mad people think they can just come up and just take your stuff that you worked your ass off to get anyway let me stop this ain't no crime video <laughs> it just i get emotional when i think about that so um that oh i guess i was just saying that um he got me thinking about him out there. All his tools laid out, um, clean out his toolbox. So he got his toolbox all hosed down and everything out there, set out in the sun and dry. And he come in the house. He said, he sat there. He he was waiting on Holly and Kyle to go to work. He said, all right, Mom, we'll get started. I said, well, if you'll just clean my bathtub, I don't care if you don't do another thing. <laughs> Y'all, <laughs> he went out there and got his wheel brush, not the, not the wire kind, the, Regular brush kind. He went out there and got his wheel brush. He got his wheel brush. He and got he, my cleaner. There's a cleaner I get on Amazon. I wish I could think of it. He done throwed it away. It is real good on soap scum. We have soap scum because this man uses a bar of soap a week. If y'all see, if y'all seen him, <laughs> if y'all seen him in the shower when he soaps up, he looks like, <laughs> he looks like the marshmallow man up on the Ghostbusters. He's white from head to toe. Oh my awesome. lord. He won't. Anyway, I tell him he goes to a bar so weak. <laughs> so, it's, he won't rinse it off. That gets on my nerves. Well, I do rinse it off. No, you don't. I can go in and tell that you didn't. So, <laughs> it doesn't take long. I have to keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Now, this is not a, a black shower. Trust, it is not a dirty shower. So it wasn't like he was in there cleaning off mold and mildew and, you know, soap scum that thick. I just couldn't get down for a long, well, I 
it's been years since I've been able to get on my knees just because I can't um, get on because they're bone on bone. And now I'm getting with my back. I can't even sit on the side and reach over because I'm not strong enough to like scrub it. So I'm just like, just, just clean my tub, right? I'm sitting in there and it sounds like he's in that bathtub wrestling an alligator. Y'all, that brush of just big, 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 but I'm going to tell you, it shines like new money. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I got a showroom tub show. It's a combo. One one piece. Showroom purdy, yeah, let me yeah. tell you. And he so said, well, I'll mop it. Well, what about this toilet? I said, well, I just cleaned the sinks that earlier. I stood there and cleaned the sinks. We got two sinks. That's a nut. 30 minutes, y'all. Get scone, get you a cup of coffee. We're going to be here a while. It might take two days for this video to have uploaded. It's Sunday. Y'all might not be seeing this till Tuesday. I don't know. Um, so when we built the house back in the bathroom, it's a, it's a big bathroom. I'll say when they built this house, my mom and her husband at that time, my brother's daddy, they built this house brand new in 1971. And it's a big bathroom and the washer and dryer's in there. So I just said leave it like that. It don't bother me. I don't need a special laundry room, which it would be nice. I would love to have a laundry room. I could put like, you know, laundry sign, blah, blah, blah. That's not going to happen. Um, so it's, it's a big bathroom. Well, what we had in there was the typical times of the day we had replaced it and put in a brand new, the long, um, cabinet with two sinks in it. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. So he's like, we, he was getting ready to plumb it. He want, now he did want to make sure what did I want in the bathroom. I said, I want that with two sinks. I want the two sinks. I want him to have his and me to have mine. Cause when he brushes his, y'all, my Lord, when he brushes his teeth, he slings toothpaste down the road. <sighs> Listen, hold on a second. I'm going to cut this, blow my nose and be back. Okay. I took care of that. Toothpaste for days. I don't know how he's got any enamel left on his teeth. This well, man, I tell him I want that. I want the two sinks. He plums it. <laughs> well, we go to Lowe's to look for vanities. <laughs> he kept saying, that ain't going to fit. That ain't going to fit. I'm like, well, how did you plumb it? So everything where they would have like the two doors in the front and then like, drawers down the side and two sinks that you know that's what i wanted nothing was plumbed it would it would go in where the drawers were <sighs> come to find out when i said i wanted two sinks instead of putting it back the way it was with two sinks he plumbed it for two sinks <laughs> so i have two vanities with a little spot in the middle you know what it's beautiful. <laughs> I have these. They're like cabinet vanities. They look like a, a little table, you know, with legs and glass doors in the front. They're, they're really pretty and separate, like big white sinks around it. So those are pretty. Now the rest of the bathroom ain't decorated, but them sinks are pretty. So that worked out. Anyway, he's like, well, what about this toilet and these sinks? I said, well, I, I wiped the sinks down, you know, earlier today, yesterday. He says, well, what you want me to clean this toilet with? I'm like, up under the cabinet. You got the squirty stuff. And, well, what do you want me to clean the rest of it? I said, well, do you see something up in there that squirts? Then use it. <laughs> <laughs> so he's in there. He's cleaned the toilet. And he come out. He said he cleaned the sinks too. I, I guess he just, why not? And, um, well, you want me to mop? I said, or sweep and mop. So I said, well, I vacuum, so you, you can mop. What you want me to use? I said, well, I got three mops. I got the Swiffer. And I got like one wet pad left. I got a steam mop and I got a mop mop. He said, well, don't the Swiffer get around the toilet better? Yeah, it does. Okay, we'll get that. <laughs> he comes in there with the Swiffer. He's piddling with the, the little head of it. He's like, well, I can't, I can't figure out how this thing works. I'm like, oh my gosh. I said, you got to get the thing up in the wet pad and stick it to it. Oh, well, I thought it come ready to mop i'm like no so he's standing there i'm telling him stop 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 he's just headed from the kitchen to the bathroom and i'm screaming at him just let me tell you how to do it well you just stick it on there don't you oh lord 
No, you have to pull out the flaps, put them in, poke them down. Oh, I see. Off he goes. <laughs> so he got the bathroom mopped. <laughs> what an ordeal. Then he come in there. He swept the whole kitchen, mopped the kitchen. He used to stay mopping there, so he got the kitchen mopped. And now this is all after he had done work all night long. And I don't even remember what time it was. He finally went over and sat down. Maybe about. It was shortly before I started cooking. About. I think he sat down about 5 o'clock. And uh, so he'd been going. Just shy of 24 hours. Which is typical. It's typical on the weekends. It's just typical. That's how, that's how he does. But. The big spring clean. Of 2018 almost put me in a mental hospital. <laughs> you already know he has tunnel vision. You already know he's rough as a cob. He's a moving train. Okay. He decides he's going to spring clean this house. He's going to pull out the stove. He's going to move all the furniture. He's going to pull out the washer and the dryer. Y'all think. That's wonderful. Yes, it was wonderful. But my experience with him is if it slings around and breaks in the process, oh well. Because he's used to working on the trucks and you have to be rough. So he's not gentle with anything, especially if it's mine. <laughs> he don't care. He just don't. He's not, he's not wired that way to think I need to be careful. So he's in there, he gets the stove pulled out, Now I'm kind of dealing with that. That's when he starts talking about he's going to pull the washer and dryer out. And he's already flinged and flanged everything around while he's cleaning. And I'm like, no, just just, just don't, right? <sighs> Y'all, I had to get me a drink, at that time it had to be tea, a snack. And I went to the bedroom, shut that door. And watch TV. And I told him, I said, don't you open that door till this house is put back. And I don't even know you've been in it. <laughs> so I sat back in my room for I don't know how many hours while he tore that house, slam apart, clean and ever nook and cranny. Got it all put back so I didn't have to see the carnage. And then come got me. Had a beautifully clean house. But in the process, I almost had a stroke. <laughs> so... <laughs> Oh my gosh, y'all, did y'all even want to hear all that? I don't even know if you did or not. <laughs> so anyway, that was yesterday. <laughs> it, it was something else, but I got a nice clean bathroom, mop floor, so that was real good. Well, today, <clears throat> he... We had plans, which we still get to keep, but it messes him up because he signs up every weekend to get an extra run on Sunday. He works seven days a week if they let him, but DOT hours, you know, he can't do it. Um, but he signs up if they have extra runs on Sunday to get him an extra run. Well, the dispatcher told him Friday, said he was covered up for the weekend. So Dave was like, well, you know, call me. So he was in the shower yesterday after he'd done all that. And, um, his dispatcher called and gave me the trailer numbers and, you know, where he's going and everything. So today he's going to Roanoke. And um I was like, well, is that going to mess up our plans? Because we already bought our movie tickets online. And um it, I had done seen Rambo, y'all know, with Holly. And I told him about it and he wants to see it. So we got our movie tickets and um <clears throat> then we we're going to Sonny's. I mean, I'm, when we get to Sunny's, I'm going to um, show y'all a picture of that coupon so you see I ain't lying. You sign up for their whatever it's called program, and on your birthday, in your birthday month, they send you a postcard for a free meal. Y'all, it's up to like whatever the price of it is now. It used to be seventeen ninety nine. I think it's 18 something. So any meal up to that amount, and that amount is the amount of their biggest meal, which is the platter sampler. We've got a little, just a little bit of everything, like a couple ribs, some brisket, pulled pork. Um, <clears throat> so we have planned to use that because it runs out, what, in a couple of days, tomorrow? You don't pass up a free $18 meal. <laughs> this family don't. <laughs> so, he's got to go to Roanoke today. 
But we're going to go to the movies first. Then we're going to go eat. And then we're going to come home. And then he's going to get on the road. But that Sonny's meal, I looked it up in my tracker. 40 some points. Now I'm going to tell you, I've had it because every time we get the coupon, we each get it. So it's like, buy one, get one free. And then we switch. He takes my chicken and I take his ribs because he likes chicken. I like ribs. We have so many opposites. Y'all, I'm going to sit down one day. I'm going to make a list of everything we have opposite. And I bet it'll take two notebook papers. But it was like 40 some points for that plate of food. And I'm going to tell you right now, I've had it enough to know there is not 40 some points worth of food on that platter. Is like, I'm going to piecemeal it out. I'm going to look at it. And I can look at it and tell you if it's like three ounces of meat. That's what I'm going to count. I am not counting 40 some points. I'm probably going to burn up all my weeklies anyway. But I'm not um, sentencing myself to point prison because they don't know how to uh, point out their food. <laughs> Listen, your mileage may vary, but that's how I do it. I don't take like that Captain D's we had. It had so many points. Well, when we got the plate, there was no way I was pointing out that much for like a little half a cup of rice. Whatever else the, the baked tater I had, I cut it off and, and I ate like, I can't remember how many ounces I ate. So I knew how many points to count for that. And then I got rid of the rest. So I um got my points down on that as to what I was oh, actually man. eating. Cause, but I'm, I'm going to get some points for the barbecue sauce. I'm, the last time we went for my birthday, I did not eat no barbecue sauce. I go to Sonny's. I like the ribs, but the ribs to me don't have no flavor unless I put that sweet sauce on it because that's what I go for. So I'm having some of that today. I will count points for that. I don't care if it goes over my weeklies. I am not depriving myself like I did on my birthday. Life is too short to not have a couple tablespoons of barbecue sauce. That barbecue sauce ain't going to keep me fat. If I eat a cup of it every day, then I would be eating all that sugar. But that ain't how it happens. So I'm going to enjoy that barbecue sauce today. So I'm going to take you with me. I'm going to show you my food. I don't know. I don't know what all we might see. Oh, it's been 45 minutes. Y'all might not see another blasted thing. Because I swear to you, I, I knew I wanted to tell you some things. But I didn't know I was going to tell you so much. So that's it. I don't believe I got no more today. I believe I'm wore out. Y'all want to be tired by now. <laughs> so, I probably will come back and show you my food. Which it'll be on my food journal, but that's part of my day out today. Anyway. Okay, I'm, I'm signing off for now. Cut. Bye. Okay, we just come out of the movie. I, I gotta reiterate, if I didn't tell y'all the other day. I'm not gonna spoil the movie. But <laughs> if you don't like blood, don't go. <laughs> If you do go, watch the credits, and, and that's all I'm going to tell you about it. Now, we're headed to Sonny's. We were like, what kind of idiots were we once we found out it was race week? But then we're like, well, they're all at the races, and so no other idiots will be out because they will have remembered the race. So we'll just be out here, just us and whoever else didn't. So anyway, we're headed to Sonny's, and I will show you that big old plate of food when I get there. We thought the race was already starting, but here's two hours, well, two o'clock, two hours later, and they're still crowding in. Oh, here we go. go. Here's the speedway. There's a little bit better shot. Mm there in the back there's the drag strip and then the dirt track and then all these camping people I'm surprised. there's my coupon I was telling you about look at that up to $18.99 that is how much the dinner cost listen y'all think that ain't some food <laughs> I got a sweet tater, some tater salad, which they don't have a baked tater, and I'm like, I'm going to look it up, and I'm whatever the points are, I'm eating it. I'm giving David my chicken, and there's the two ribs, the brisket, and the pulled pork, so I'm going to park this meal out, and you know what? 
it just might be 40 some points by the time I get through. When I get through eating, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you what's left. Okay, here's the aftermath. I ate a bite of my pulled pork. I ate one little piece of biscuit. I ate my ribs, and they were not good, but I, I ate them anyway. Then ate all my tater salad, half the tater. So David.